Hello and welcome, brewers and lab nerds. Today I'm going to show you how to do acid washing of your yeast. This is very, very different from uh, washing your yeast, so you can go back to that video if that's what you're looking for. Alright, so the, the reason why you would acid wash your yeast is to kill off bacteria. A lot of bacteria cannot withstand low pH, but it's actually not the pH that kills off the yeast, it's the, uh, or the acids in the hops that are in the suspension of the yeast slurry that actually kill it off. So if you have a new uh, sample of yeast and you thought maybe you got some contamination in it, lowering the pH will not actually kill off any of these bacteria. So this is when, you have, when you're trying to re-pitch a previously used yeast slurry. So the steps are, first you want to take your yeast slurry, which I had in this container earlier. I had it stored under uh, wort and I had about uh, one part yeast slurry on the bottom and then nine parts of wort above it. Go back to that video also if you haven't seen how to properly store yeast. I shook that up to mix it well and then pitched that into this Erlenmeyer flask. Now we, when we do this procedure you want the temperature of both the yeast and the phosphoric acid, which is what we're going to be using, to be between 2 and 4 degrees. I like to start at around 2 degrees because it's going to sit here for a minimum of 30 minutes so to not have to regulate the temperature where this is going on uh, and just do it at room temperature you're better off starting at the lower range of that temperature. All right. The, what we will now do is to use a pH meter to get the pH of this yeast slurry down to 2. To do that we're going to be using phosphoric acid, a pipettes and a pipette pump. What's super important also is to use protective equipment. So we're going to use safety glasses. I have an apron on that's acid resistant as well as acid resistant uh, gloves. Okay, sometimes in these videos I say it's a good idea to use this and I should be using it, but that's when it comes to contamination, okay? When we're dealing with, not contamination, but burning yourself, you know, phosphoric acid is 88%, you don't mess around, you definitely use the PPE. All right. So we're gonna take our pH meter, put it into the solution, and what I'll do is to start the um, stir plate here while I get the safety equipment on. Now I should have had regular safety glasses, but unfortunately I forgot those at work. So I will look slightly idiotic while using sunglasses, but that is a lot better than uh, having uh, serious burns. So that's what we'll do. Let me slow this down a little bit. There we go. All right, we see that we are starting with a pH of 4.8. What you can do is take a measurement of where you start how much uh, phosphoric acid you have to uh, um, add for certain volumes so you can have records of that for next time you go about doing this. Alright, we'll start first with one milliliter of 88% phosphoric acid and see how that responds. This is about one liter of uh, yeast slurry and wort mix. All right, that is one milliliter. You can see here the pH dropped to about four. 0.26. We want to bring the pH down to 2.1 plus or minus 0.1. So really the range is 
2 to 2.2. .2. I want to try to add 3 milliliters of phosphoric acid. So in other words, 2 milliliters more. So this is something you can do gradually so you don't overshoot your target of 2.1. So I brought it down to 2.76. We'll add a little bit more. At this point we'll start just dripping it in. Sorry, 3.2, 2.26, so we're getting into the range where it would be acceptable to start the timer, but we're going to try to go exactly for 2.1. see a little bit that actually is dripping down the side of the Erlenmeyer flask. So because of that, I'm going to start stop slightly above because I know that's going to be hitting at some point in the near future. There we are at 2.1. If the pH is at 2.2, you can leave it for up to two hours. If the pH is uh, at 2.0 you can leave it for a maximum of 30 minutes and that's just because it's a lot of stress on the yeast if it goes for longer than that when the pH is lower so we're at 2.07 here and actually slowly decreasing a little bit probably because I dripped some on the inside here as well so I would go for let's say 45 minutes start a timer in 45 minutes we would stop it and then immediately pitch it into the, uh, the work that would be sitting and waiting for it. This is not something that you do and then wait a long time. You have a maximum of 30 minutes from the time you, you're done with your acid washing until it goes to work in your work. All right. And some other notes is you don't ever want to acid wash yeast that's not healthy. So you want to make sure you first do a viability and vitality test of your yeast prior to doing this, or you will go ahead and kill off all your yeast by, doing, by lowering the pH to this extreme. And uh, that is uh, really it. So again, just to go over the procedures, you uh, get your yeast slurry to about one part yeast slurry to nine parts work, lower that to 2.1 plus or minus 0.1 pH, Keep it there for between 30 minutes at 2.0 pH and up to 2 hours at a 2.2 pH. Then immediately pitch it and a maximum 30 minutes after you have uh, finished. And that is it. If you have any questions, please comment below and please subscribe to the channel. And that's it. Cheers!